Okay, so I've had a couple commenters asking, hey, how do I put um, Linux Ubuntu on my um, Elite desk? You know, is it supported? What's the best way to do it? Um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, what, what specs do I need? And um, so I thought uh, I'd give you a um, kind of a quick and dirty getting... Um, Linux onto an elite desk uh, two ways. One is that uh, we'll just install it directly so it becomes a straight uh, desktop on there. And then the other is a quick and dirty getting um, Proxmox running on your elite desk and then uh, installing and creating a virtual machine and installing um, Linux that way and just kind of talk about some of the, the advantages you get when you go to the um, virtual machine route. Um, also give me a chance to try out this guy. Um, I, it, I was looking for another, um, you know, SATA SSD and this Vulcan Z by TeamForce uh, had come up. And so I thought I would, I guess it's TeamForce. It says T-Force on it, but uh, I assume that stands for Team. Um, yeah, team group, um, uh, uh, SADA. So, um, nothing special about it. I just wanted to give it a try. You know, I've got a whole collection of different ones. So we'll go through, a show as far as, um, uh, downloading, um, creating the installation media, um, you know, go, setting it up, um, anything that you need to do special in the, um, BIOS, in order to support things like uh, Proxmox and virtual machines. So that way uh, gives you another choice besides Windows. Uh, especially, uh, I'm, this is on a G4, but it could be just as easily doing it on a, a G2, G1 even. Um, you know, I've got uh, uh, Proxmox running on, on all various flavors. Now there are a ton of different, they call them distros or distributions of um, Linux. And, you know, it all, we could be, uh, we could spend hours debating the different ones and there's a lot of sites that will uh, direct you to this and that. Um, I'm not really here to um, give you one or the other. I just figure I'll just pick something, the real lowest common denominator, which is probably Ubuntu and uh, kind of go with that, the Ubuntu desktop. Uh, there's also a server version, but for our case, we'll just go Ubuntu um, desktop and um, kind of show you how um, you can use the um, download um, in various means in terms of either creating an installer or um, using it um, for, with your um, Proxmox installation. So let's first go to Ubuntu. Okay, download Ubuntu Desktop. And come down here, download 22, uh, I guess that's the latest. Um, uh, LTS stands for long-term support. That means that, um, you know, if you get it, it's not something that's just gonna um, go away. And we'll just save that in our downloads. It's a fairly large file, 4.7 gig. So depending on your um, uh, internet connection, it could take a while. And uh, there are some uh, alternatives and uh, mirrors and such that you may want to explore uh, to make it a little faster. Okay, now that it's finished downloaded, the other thing we want to grab is something that's going to take that uh, ISO file and turn it into something that we can use um, as a installer off of our USB drive. So the one I like to use is called Rufus. And you can just take the take the Rufus 4.4. .4. 
Now that we've got Rufus downloaded and our ISO, uh, what we'd want to do is stick in a um, thumb drive that we could use because um, it's going to be wiped out and we'll have the installer put on. So let's run the Ruf Rufus and I already put in a 64 gig guy. You could probably get by with even like 32, maybe even 16. Um, you want to select the ISO that we're going to be using. So we'll click here, pick that, and pretty much can just take all of the uh, defaults. We'll set start and just, you know, is it okay? Sure, go for it. And yes, it's going to, um, uh, yes, to connect to the, okay, I guess there's something having to do with Grub. Um, uh, only includes installation, uses, okay. I, I would say sure, go for it and, and to pull down what it needs. Um, again, I've used Rufus for, for many, many years and I know a lot of people out there have too. Okay. And we'll let this run and come back to it. Be patient as it's um, making it. Uh, for mine, it got to where, you know, here it's saying 83%, around 50.4%. It just sat there for quite a while. So this has been, oh, probably going at least 10 minutes now. So, and of course, it also depends on the uh, speed of your um, main hard drive and of course the USB, um, several factors. So uh, if it gets to a certain point and it looks like it's not doing anything, just, just wait a little longer and it will keep going. It. And maybe this is not painfully obvious, but um, I'm doing this, of course, on a totally different computer than what is going to have um, the Ubuntu installed onto the Elite Desk. I'm actually using an Elite Desk, uh, my normal G2 65 watt. So you will need, you know, a laptop or something to create these on. I mean, technically, I guess you could do it all on one computer, but little, I, you know, I think the assumption is, is that you're probably putting this onto a new um, Elite Desk. So just keep that in mind. Okay, it's finished, I'm gonna do close. And we'll um, eject it. And take it out. All right. And next we'll boot up uh, into the installer. Okay, you're going to want to hook up your, you know, some sort of monitor to it, your keyboard and mouse, definitely want your uh, network. And then I've put my flash drive in the front here. And then I'm just going to attach the power and start it up. Um, when it is starting up, you're going to want to hold down the escape key on your keyboard. If this is a case where you've never installed anything, you're probably okay and we'll probably try to uh, install from the USB, but I would still do the escape, go into the boot manager, which I'll show you in a, in a minute here, and be able to actually pick that, um, uh, that installer, and then it will kind of go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and add the, um, the power. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to switch my monitor so I can see it. I'll be right back. Okay. Plugging in power and hitting the power key and holding down the escape. Okay, now it looks like, okay, now I can hold down the escape. Sometimes those, um, I don't know, can be kind of funky. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's so that you don't accidentally bump it or something, but uh, okay. All right, I'm going to switch over to my capture and we'll look at it. Okay, we're in the boot menu. Well, actually we're in the startup menu technically, but we will go to the boot menu F9. And we see in my particular case, there's the Kingston. All right, we want to try or install Ubuntu. 
This is going in or should go in to what they sometimes call a live CD, which in essence is a way where you can um, play with uh, Ubuntu, see what you think of it, and then um, if you like it, then there's usually a choice on there to do the actual install. So we'll let this come up. All right, that's a good sign. So we could either do uh, try Ubuntu. So I can use my mouse and I can say try. And that's going to try to reboot back in in trial mode. Okay, we see our little jellyfish. And here we've got uh, normal setup. Um, you know, if I wanted to, I could go into these various, um, you know, I guess look at some of the apps, run the Firefox web browser. Um, and as I mentioned, if you have your network installed, then also when it's doing the installation, sometimes it will pull down updates as part of it, just, you know, makes things easier. Um, I'm not going to really play with it because in this case I know, but um, it might be good. You know, a, a lot of the uh, distros have this live CD option. So you can kind of play with it and you go, eh, maybe this isn't for me. And so maybe you try a different one or you go, oh, this is great. Um, or I just want to, um, you know, I want to try a couple things before I fully commit. So in this case, we're just going to go ahead down here and just say install. Okay. Um, we'll continue. You pick your language. Keyboard. Um, what do you want to do? We'll just do a normal install. The, notice here, download updates while installing Ubuntu. That's good. Um, install third-party software um, and Wi-Fi hardware. Eh, you know, it's up to you as far as that. Um, we'll just go real basic stuff for now. Continue. I should explain that uh, the reason this is coming up, uh, normally people won't see this unless, of course, they've tried to do um, some install first, but it's having issues with it booting and after I did the install. And so I did, I took out, I had a uh, NVMe drive in there and I don't know if all the various experimentations with this uh, G4 that I know something got messed up. So I'm trying it with just the straight um, SATA drive in there, and which is the one we installed before. Now I'm gonna erase it and continue the, the install. And you pick where you're located. A lot of times it will figure this out um, by simply the fact that you're connected on the network. I just arbitrarily picked um, one here. We'll say OK or continue. Uh, we'll put in uh, hand me down tech. Uh, the name, you, you can change your computer name you want. Looks like, what is it going to give us? Uh, HP. Wow. <laughs> Really long one, that's okay, not a big deal. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put in the password, something simple. Okay, and I'm just gonna say require my password to log in as opposed to going in directly. So every time you'll just have to type in the password. You can pick this other one and goes in automatically, especially you you know at home, one less thing to have to concern, but we'll just take the defaults for now. Okay, we'll just let this run. Um, thankfully it doesn't seem to take as long as it did to cre actually create the uh, installation media. All right, the install is done. We'll click restart now. We'll probably have us uh, remove the um, <clears throat> flash drive at some point in here. Okay, we see there. Um, remove and press enter. Yes, this was much better. I have a feeling that things were just 
quite confused. So um, perhaps if you're doing an install, maybe just have the one, whatever drive it's gonna install on, just have the single one in there. Uh, particularly if you're coming from like maybe you had Windows on there at one point or back and forth just to make sure that the, uh, everything gets updated. So I'm just going to go in here, um, make sure I'm going to log in. And there we have it. And you can, you know, link your accounts and so forth. We'll skip that. Um, I'm going to skip the pro, uh, I don't want to send the info. Now, oftentimes once you, um, uh, come into Ubuntu, um, it's going to want or start downloading, um, updates. And so as you wait for it, it's going to do its um, download, but you know, you can do your updates, you can, you know, get all that ready, but hey, we now have, um, uh, you know, Ubuntu running on here and um, let's, um, now that we have it here, let's show how we would do um, something similar, but what we're going to do is install uh, Proxmox on the same computer and then um, install this uh, or the same Ubuntu distro inside of it. So here, here we go. <laughs> yeah, do you want to install now? Um, there's there's usually quite a bit of, of uh, detail security updates. I mean, you've got almost, uh, uh, what's that, uh, 300 meg of stuff. So anyway, that I would normally do that right away. But in this case, it's going to be blown away. I'm not going to worry about it.